going on, everyone? It is here. The NBA season is officially upon us. I am so stoked. Uh, we have the Denver Nuggets take on the Los Angeles Lakers. It's time for the Lakers to silence the critics, kind of quiet Mike Malone a little bit, sit him down, let him be humble for a moment, spoil that rain ceremony, and I'm excited. I am really pumped. Uh, this is going to be a great test right out the gate. The Lakers have a grueling schedule uh, to start this season. Uh, but look, there's no excuses. In my opinion, this Lakers roster is deep enough, talented enough. They should be in that conversation for a contender. And in my opinion, should be hoisting that Larry O'Brien trophy at the end of the year. Obviously, it's going to take a little time. You know, you're going to have the good games. You're going to have the bad games. It's just the ups and flows of the NBA season regardless. But don't get too high with the highs. Don't get too low, low with the lows. If you were a part of this channel last season, then you know that's kind of my mantra. That's kind of like how I feel, you know, like let cooler heads prevail. Let's wait and see what the end result is, right? I was campaigning that way all season last season. Everyone, you know, not everybody, but a lot of people told me like, oh, you're this, that, and the other. And look, we were in the Western Conference Finals. Obviously, it's not winning an NBA championship, but you never know how quickly things can change. This is sports. So, Follow this journey along this season and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button on this video, and let's dive into it. Because what I want to talk about is the pros and the cons, the goods and the bads uh, heading into this Denver matchup and, of course, the NBA season. Because although preseason isn't the be-all, end-all, uh, it obviously is a nice little sample size, a little template of some things that we obviously need to work on, some things that we are looking good at that can translate well, right? There's those building blocks, those stones that you know, we kind of have to carry with us into the season. Some are good, some are bad. So let's dive into it. Now, the bads, right? Rebounding. We, this offseason, addressed size, right? Going and getting bigger players, being bigger out on the perimeter, right? Like one of the big issues was we were bigger than everyone else except for Denver, right? And Denver is still a very big team. And so the Lakers are going to have to do a much better job than they did in preseason rebounding the basketball, right? They would have great defensive sequences and then just get, just completely ruin it by giving up the offensive board. And we're just getting rebound on a regular basis. That's not good. That's not what we want to see. Now, how much of that was just its preseason Right? There was a couple times where we saw there's a loose ball. They, they're they not running after the ball. They just kind of like, oh, let them let them grab the ball. We'll go down and play some defense, right? Again, that's part of preseason where I would hope in the regular season you'd go and you know make the extra effort to get that ball. You know, maybe make that extra jump to rebound the ball. Don't just say, all right, concede it and go, okay, he's got it, right? I do understand, again, preseason. You're just trying to get out of there healthy. You're just trying to work up a sweat, trying to get your game legs underneath you. That's fine. I'm okay with that. But the lack of rebounding has been a trend the last few years, right? I know some people, oh, Darvin, it was a trend even before Darvin Ham, right? Like we've had trouble rebounding the basketball and giving up second chance points in the last few years. So I really hope that we address that. We have the size. There's no reason or excuse. It's just putting in the effort, you know, locating the basketball, chasing down the basketball. Obviously, you're going to give up offensive rebounds. It happens. Every team's going to do that, right? So uh, don't be shocked if the Lakers have an offensive rebound or two that they conceded. It happens. But it's just the frequency, right? Like, we shouldn't, we shouldn't be playing the Golden State Warriors and they're out rebounding us when like our smallest guy is as big as their centers. Like stop. Like let's let's stop doing that. Let's knock that off. It's just about effort. Right? Teams were coming after us in preseason. Teams wanted to beat us in preseason more than we did. I mean, midway through the third quarter, we were playing our G League team and a lot of teams were still playing their starters, right? Or playing their role guys. So it was a big difference in how the approach was in those games, but still, like, I I want to make sure that the Lakers are doing the things that are necessary, right? It's all about habits. Lakers had a couple bad habits in preseason that I hope don't translate into the regular season. Uh, the other thing, and this, in my opinion, might be the biggest thing, is just closing quarters strong. Man, it has been a real trend, <laughs> The last few years, again, 
people were trying to blame Darvin. This was a trend that happened even before Darvin Ham, right? Like the only year that the Lakers haven't really been that team that like had a hard time closing quarters was that bubble team. We were what, like 52 or 54 and 0 or something like that when we had a lead going into, uh, going into the fourth at the end of the third, right? Like, and I'm not saying that we have to be like that historically great, but like we should be when we have a lead maintaining it. Now, obviously there's going to be those outliers. You, you know, you're going to have get every team, you know, for the most part has those games where, you know, they had double digit lead, you know, or they were up 15 or 20 or whatever, and they end up losing the game. It happens. Right. But it's just the frequency again in which it happens. Like last year, there were so many games where, you know, we would have double digit leads with like five minutes left. And then by the time the quarter's over, we're down five. And it's like, what is going on here? Right. And our offense just gets stagnant. Like we have way too much firepower, way too much shooting, way too much playmaking, way too many guys that can just get to the basket at will. Like there's no reason for us on a regular basis to not be closing out and finishing quarters, right? We have to do a good job of execution, especially late in games, right? Like towards the end of the third, the end of the fourth, like we need to make sure we're doing our job and doing our part. Again, some of that was just the Lakers throwing out random sets, random units. A lot of times we didn't even have a playmaker out there. So it was a lot of like ISO ball and stuff. Like the ball wasn't moving like it was in like the, say the first quarter or whatever, right? Where in the regular season, you're probably always going to have one of LeBron, D'Lo, and Reeves on the court. So you're always going to have a playmaker that's going to be able to keep everything flowing. So it's not something that I'm like super nervous about going into the regular season. Uh, It's something that I think a lot of it can kind of just be chalked up to just the circumstances of the preseason. But it is something that has been the last few years a persistent thing that I don't want to see carry over into the regular season. But moving on to the good stuff, right? Because I wanted to get the bad stuff out of the way, jump into the the positives, right? In this video on a good note. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. But the core guys have looked fantastic. That's what really matters, right? Some of the guys like Christian Wood and stuff are kind of coming in their own. But the core guys that we're, we're really going to be leaning heavily on have been great. Like, even, like, Torian Prince has been great, right? D'Lo has been fantastic. Like, he looks like a guy that's heard all the noise. Rui Hachimura has been fantastic. He's coming off the bench. He's going to be one of our big offensive threats off the bench. I wouldn't even be shocked if he's in the conversation for sixth man of the year. Austin Reeves looks like him still, right? LeBron looks more fluid. LeBron looks like he's a man on a mission. Anthony Davis looks like bubble AD all over again. He's knocking down threes. He's just taking guys off the dribble. He's playing aggressive and physical. He looks healthy. Like, this looks good. Our offense is flowing, right? I mean, our offense looks amazing when, like, the key guys, again, are on the basketball court, right? If you actually watch the games, like, our offense was, like, unstoppable. Like, like, we were scoring at will and in a multitude of different ways. Right, like we we were doing fantastic. The ball was moving, just running a lot of pick and rolls. D'Lo and AD, D'Lo and Jackson Hayes, even right, and that's another person that's been a real standout. I love that we're seeing our key guys, the guys that are very likely going to be big parts of the rotation, basically already showing the 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 blueprint of how they're going to be successful. And you got to imagine that. The more games we play, the further we get into the season, the more that that's going to become a thing and the better the Lakers will get because they're only going to develop more chemistry, more understanding of each other, right? Build those foundations and those relationships. And that's huge, right? And, and that's something to really look forward to. And then I'm, I'm definitely keeping an eye on all season long. But, you know, a, another big thing is shooting, right? Like we're actually shooting the basketball excellent. And, uh, like, I think we'll be middle. Like, I don't think we're going to be top five or anything like that shooting the three ball, but I do think we'll be middle of the pack, right? I could see us in, like, that 10 to 15 range. I think a lot of it is going to have to do with LeBron because LeBron's still going to take, you know, six or seven threes a game. If he's shooting 20%, then that's just going to tank our percentage. And then I think we're probably, you know, 15 to 20. 
But I think if he's hitting shots or he takes less threes, then I definitely think that the Lakers will be in that like 15 to 10 range. But I do think that they'll be somewhere in the middle of the pack. I don't think they'll be, what were they, like 25th last year in three-point percentage. I don't think that that will be the case this year. I think they're going to be really good. Right? We have plenty of really good shooters. Rui's looked great shooting the three ball. Even Jared Vanderbilt, I know it was a one-game sample size, but he shot 66%, and he even missed his first three. Um, Anthony Davis is knocking down threes. The last game LeBron played, he actually hit a bunch of threes and shot well. Uh, you know, obviously, Torrey and Prince, D'Lo, Reeves. Like, the Lakers have shooters on this roster. Lakers have, like, three, maybe even four guys that could shoot around 40%, especially with Gabe Vincent, right? You got uh, Torrey and Prince, who promised us he's shooting 40% this year. D'Lo, Reeves, and then Gabe Vincent has shown that he can be a 38 to 40% three-point shooter. Then you have Christian Wood, who knows 38%, right? So the Lakers have the shooting that we need to have success and, and be one of the better three-point shooting teams. Um, and then last thing is just defense, right? Like, we obviously we had bad defensive moments, missed defensive assignments, stuff like that. And, you know, there were times where we just kind of laxed on the defensive end. Again, I attribute a lot of that to preseason. I do. Because we saw enough that when the Lakers were locked down, you're not scoring on this team right? Unless you just hit some crazy shot. But we saw like, again, the core guys, D'Lo getting after it, disrupting passing lanes, you know, uh, uh, closing in, closing in on traps, you know, staying in front of his guys, right? We've seen uh, just Anthony Davis just be an absolute monster and just dominate the defensive end. Torian Prince, like we've seen enough on the defensive side where I'm comfortable saying the Lakers are going to be, you know, top one to three defense, I believe, right? I really do. And I really think that they have a real shot at being top five offense, top five defense. I really do. Which, to put in comparison, last year, the only team that was that was the Boston Celtics. That was the only team that was top five in both. I, I really think the Lakers are going to be, with their size, their athleticism, their youth, they should be relentless, and they should be getting after it. Now, obviously, there's going to be moments, there's going to be games, there's going to be possessions where, you know, it's just, it's not our night. It happens. But I'm talking about consistently on a regular basis. I think the Lakers are going to be one of the better, if not the best defensive teams in the league. And that's huge because I think our offense will be there. But even the nights where it's not, you can always rely on your defense. And defense wins championships, and I'm expecting them to be that defensive team. But anyway... As always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Is there anything that I'm missing that you have concerns about or anything that I'm missing that you see very positive? I mean, there's little things that we could talk about, obviously, but I think these were just kind of like the big key things that I wanted to, to touch on and kind of dive into. But again, love to hear your thoughts and opinions, so let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Appreciate you all. I'll see you all in the next one.